But the last player I want to talk about individually before we basically we're going to be breaking down our 25 squad picks uh, to end the show. Mm-hmm. So before we do that, I brought up Pooj and I saw today something that kind of frustrated me in that I, there was a report from Gerard uh, Romero, who is one of the we'll say beat reporters, but he's one of the big voices in in in, in Barcelona in understanding the team. And sometimes as a journalist, he gets it right. Sometimes he gets it wrong. And today he's. <laughs> Gabi has moved above Puj in the depth chart and it stinks because I think now this story about Gabi is being, being shaded through the lens of the, the Puj minutes, which I think is as Levon and I talked about last week, we did the whole Puj thing. So I don't want to do the Puj thing. I want to do the Gabi thing because to me at 16, it goes to the, the ball day age consideration that Gabi is a good player and not a good player. I, we, I, I again said about floor, Gabi's floor is incredibly high and I know it feels weird. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to reckon with the fact that between Fatih and Pedri and Gabi and, uh, and Balde and maybe, and maybe even Nico, maybe even Puj that Barca have this huge contingent of 16 to 21 year olds or 20 year olds or whatever it may, may be with Puj being a little older. They have this uh, five to six to seven players who could really impact this club for the long haul and yeah. it's as much as all the other right because my brain is and yes we were in there too my brain is telling me that it's it's irrational and it doesn't make sense to have this many young talented players all in the same squad at the same time that doesn't make sense and it's not going to work out because not everybody gets minutes and not all these players are going to be able to have the time to develop their skills and reach that highest level that yeah. might be true but as we're going to see with this 25 squad list Barcelona are in a moment financially when this, this is the only time that this would happen. This would not have happened at any juncture in the last 10 years. But if there surely is a six to seven player generation that is prepared to take over in this huge passing of the torch, this is financially for Barcelona the moment to do that. Because if Ronald Koeman is looking for that other center midfielder, the market plus what Barca can actually use on it. They can actually pay. They can and so for the first time ever, you know, this, that player that Kuman wanted and as the midfielder, he would have arrived three weeks ago uh, yeah. in any other season, but he is not on the move. I mean, we don't even know who that's going to be or if he can show up because Barca haven't even been able to register the players that they've already brought in on free transfers and they're working on all the salary stuff negotiations. So this would be the moment for Gabi to be 16 and to get some minutes. And as far as his understanding of the game, he doesn't make, poor decisions it, no. it's like he it's always making the right decisions he's always moving and you could see the impact the it's the same thing where I, I've, I've said it other than Messi, yes and yes and yes and this is an easy player to have as your favorite player ever but in yes uh very much the way xavi kind of read a game in yes always felt when the ball was at his feet not only was he going to make the right decision but he was just one pass away from the game changing he was one yes. pass away from something happening and with yeah. Gabi, every time the ball is at his feet, it's not just me hyping him up. There's this idea that he, as he's getting more comfortable, he had a ball that he played into Griezmann uh, that, that was in, that he split, he split the back line and, and a through ball. Yeah. And that only happened after the previous six passes, which were all completed, were either sideways or backwards or uh, slightly perpendicular to the wings. And then, then at that moment, it looked like he was going to do the exact same thing he winds up turning on the ball and playing that ball immediately. So it's yeah. that he didn't get into the habit of playing that same backwards ball or that lateral ball to keep the ball moving. He does that. Mm-hmm. He keeps the ball moving the way that we expect the top, top La Masia players to do. But then he's also, he uses those patterns to lull the opposition into this under this belief that he's going to do something. And then he does something else that his teammate yeah, created. Yeah, he kind of creates gaps with. Right. And yeah, with, with the other team's relaxation. Yeah, and if he was 22, 23 years old, I mean, I'd be screaming from the top of my house to all my neighbors who don't care that, hey, this kid needs to be in the first team. But yes. because he's 16 and he's going to be 17 in a few weeks. So, right? Was it between a six and a seven? Because I was 17. Right. <laughs> more sense. But as a 16 year old, like, ah, man, that's young. That's like Cadet Ah. Usually yeah. play, play into Cadet Ah at 16. And God, he's good. He's really good. He's really good. I mean, he's, he's, I guess, like the most extreme example. And sort of, I'm, 
and if you can't tell, and I think we're probably going to get into this momentarily, I am. So there's a couple of things, like like you said, there's the this moment the Barca are in, both because of all the financial kind of the restrictions and all the the hamstringing that's happened there, and I think also you have, while the the while the old guard are still you know capable and good and in some cases you know great and very great you know you have kind of that that old guard the the recognizable sort of backbone of what Barca has been for the past like decade or dozen years those guys are at some point or another aging out I mean even you can even throw what is it like Antoine Griezmann's plan is to play what two more years in Barcelona and then go to MLS and sort of do his thing there and so there's very much, I mean, there's probably any number of, you know, anywhere from three to six or seven players who, even if they're not moved out this year because of the financial reasons, you know, within a couple of years, within two or three years are going to be very much at the, at the final stages of their careers, if not, you know, retired already. And you have this chance and these this handful of guys, I mean, in, in my estimation, I guess it's what, like maybe six guys who are potentially, any one of them individually has the potential to be, you know, a star or a superstar. Mm-hmm. And the, the likelihood of every one of them hitting is probably not that high, just because, you know, law of large numbers. I mean, it just, you know, yeah. not every prospect hands up. Now, I do think that you can kind of, it's a generation to dream on. And it's the sort of thing where if three of these guys hit and you have this situation where three of these guys from 17, 18, 19 years old are playing together at Camp Nou and they know they know that pressure. They know that, you know, the, the pitch there has become their office since they were teenagers. And I mean, there's, it's the sort of thing that, I, I recognize that it might not happen, but very rarely do you even get a chance to sort of buy that lottery ticket. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, you know, Why? maybe it's more my like kind of, it's like my, my gambler's heart showing, but like kind of part of me is just, why not see if, you know, you catch lightning in a bottle, you know, again. I mean, look at the generation that just happened. Like it would have been very easy to, you know, sort of, veer away from certain things and you know but i mean give it a give it a shot and also the good thing is financially you have cover like you can't no one can accuse you of being cheap because you're literally forcibly not allowed to spend money yeah i mean i i'm looking at not even generationally but these players i mean gabi and araho are almost five years apart uh, but mm-hmm. we consider them in the same generation because they're breaking through in the same two at the same time yeah. but realistically, I think it's Nico, Demir, Balde, and Gabi. They're the ones who aren't already in the, the first team peripheral, but mm-hmm. you have Dest, you have Emerson, you have Fati, mm-hmm. Pedri, you have Garcia, you have Puj, you have Callado, Mingueza, and Araujo. All of those are under the age of 22. Oh, and Ilesh Moiba and Peña. Yes. They're all 22 sure. or younger. And that whole list of players, you don't have to, you only are bringing in or breaking in Nico, Demir, and Balde, and Gabi. Those four are the only four that aren't already in the first team picture and already have some kind of established thing because we'd expect that even if Mingueza regresses a little bit, the first year he had him at FC Barcelona in their first team was already a positive. It was already something. It was fantastic, yeah. Same thing with Emerson at Real Betis and Eric Garcia with the Spanish national team at the Euros, right? If you're getting... 75% 75% of all of those players, they're still good players in the first team. And I think that leads us perfectly into talking about uh, Barcelona's uh, squad, because usually it's 25. So what I asked you to do and what I did is we made lists of how you fill out that 25 and let's see who's different. So I said that I had 20, I, excuse me, I had 19 locks in my 25. You had 16. So give me yes. 16 and I want to see how they compare. So I guess okay. I'll take about a second to read each, but go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to try to kind of do it by position. I sort of, uh, I freestyled it a little bit, so I didn't end up doing perfectly by position. But so, you know, we have uh, Ter Stegen, and I included Iñaki Pena in my, you know, as the, the backup, as the first team backup, just kind of breaking camp. 
Um, partly because I think we talked about, you know, Neto, his future is uncertain and he wants first team football. And, you know, so, and then going from there, I have PK, um, Serginho Dest, uh, Araujo, uh, Emerson. And so now we get into, and uh, I have Eric Garcia in there as well. Now we're getting into the sort of the Untiti Lenglet territory where I didn't put them on the locks, not because they wouldn't be sort of in a vacuum, but I know they're also kind of the, they're, they're some of the financial right, fat right. that is sort of, the, that is desperately trying to be cut. And yeah. so okay. for that reason, I did not include them. And then elsewhere, you know, we have Busquets, Messi, Pedri, uh, Frankie De Jong, um, Memphis, Kun Aguero, Collado, and Ansu Fati. Did I get everybody? Did I say Minguesa? Because Minguesa's on there too. Okay. So that's my 16. Ah, okay. So I see the, the three that you that I had that you didn't is, even though Alba is going through his salary stuff, I had mm -hmm. to lock just because I don't see how that negotiation doesn't get done and they don't lower that because of sure. Barcelona, their left back situation. Due to Dembele's injury, I have Dembele as a lock because even though his contract is up next summer, yeah. I, Barcelona with him injured is not in a position to sell him. So mm -hmm. now they're at a point where it would behoove the club to renew him and then sell him. That's probably what's going to be what's going to happen, whether mm -hmm. it, he sold in January, but I, it seems like they're moving on. No matter what, renewing him is good for him and for the club because that means the next club is going to pay him that wants him. But if he, they're going to negotiate something that another club would be willing to pay so he can move on, it might be best for everybody involved. So that's why I, I said Dembele is a lock for the squad because I can't see him leaving now based on his contract right. situation. Um, and then I also included Puj because I do understand the argument, but I just think with the amount of, if that other center midfielder doesn't come, especially since Elash Moriba is not on that list and the other center midfielders we mentioned were already um, Nico and Gabi, that that's why I put Puj on that list because even if he sees Roberto as a midfielder above Puj, and I can't imagine that Kayato is above Puj on the depth chart either because if he was, he would have been last year. Yeah. So that's why I had Puj in there, but I totally understand the argument. And then, so, I mean, we're going to use my judgment there to take yeah. it to 19. Um, so that means that, and I add the caveat that 29 through 32 on my list. Uh, so Pena wasn't actually in my 19 either. That's why if, again, if you try oh, to okay. apply, um, you actually didn't mention Roberto, did you? No. So uh, I, so I will add Sergio Roberto to mine. Like I, I had kind of jotted his name elsewhere on there and uh I, I didn't make the neatest of lists, but I, I meant to kind of put him on there because of the because his contract situation got sorted out. So that was the the delineation between him and Jordi Alba being kind of you know not that Barca would actually want to get rid of him or that he would want to leave or anything like that. But you know if you are at this impasse and in in different ways, Jordi Alba and Ricky Puj both kind of in in markedly different ways, they kind of fall under the same, into the same category for me, which is guys that for one reason or another, whether it's playing time or financial considerations and things like that, that, and Alba, obviously any transfer fee would be probably not all that substantial, but they are, they fall into the category of guys that at least like Barca can recoup some, some sort of a, you know, greater than zero transfer fee for, as well as, uh, you know, move on for the financial considerations. Now, so they, they almost work in opposite where, you know, Ricky Booge would probably, you know, he'd probably bring in a decent transfer fee. Yeah, but his, between 10 and 15 million, which I don't know yeah. if that's the kind of player that you'd want instead of 10 to 15, I think he's worth 10 to 15 to the club. Right. And, so he would kind of bring more money than his salary would save. And Alba is almost like the, the opposite. He would, he'd bring probably a nominal transfer fee, but clearing the decks, you know, would kind yeah. of eat some of the financial pain. 
So with that list, it takes us to 20 with what we have discussed here. Um, Now, Nico Gonzalez, Demir, Balde, and Gabi were not in that because I want to remind everybody that they're going to be registered with the B team and they can make a a number of appearances with the first team being with the B team. Uh, So they will probably, that four, I can almost guarantee you the four that four unit will get Champions League numbers as Mingetha did last year before he was ever called up even. So I was like surprised when Mingetha got a first team Champions League number early on in the season, but he did. And so I think Nico, Demir, Balda, and Gabi will. But it's again, it's better for the club to register them as B-team players. And if they have mm-hmm. to evaluate that, say, in January, then they will. Or they will become first-team players based on the uh, objectives, let's say, in their contracts. And so that will yeah. take place once those objectives are reached in the contract. Mm-hmm. They'll become first-team players autom- almost automatically, and then they'll be registered mm-hmm. as such. So that's why I'm saying they're going to probably start the year certainly register with Barca B instead of registering with the first team because it's helpful to do it in, in that way. Um, so here's the place where we end the show. No, because uh, I would, uh, the, yeah. the one point I wanted to make, so I had those four sort of, I didn't have them on my sort of walks for the team list, but I had them on my third list, which was sort of, you know, the kids that could make a splash. And, um, you know, but I kind of have like stars next to each of them yeah. in yeah. terms of, you know, if you can, if you can free up a little bit of wiggle room and just kind of clear out one or two veterans and, you know, in the midfield and, you know, here and there, I would be just wildly enthusiastic about um, getting those guys, getting those guys exposure and experience and kind of letting them sort of do what they're going to do and see, seeing kind of, if you have another a star or a superstar in your hands. Yeah. Um, and, and so the final point is the, we have, I have now 21 through 29. So yeah. uh, the accumulation of 10 players that will fill out the remaining five spots. So mm-hmm. there are so many players. So I, I know for everyone who says, Roberto, get him out of my club. Busquets, too slow. PK, too slow. Uh, mm-hmm. The reason we did this experiment is to remind people that Barca don't even have that many players. I know you want right. things, but that the, the ones that everybody trusts and we even named four players that everybody on the internet at least seems to say i can't i can't handle that person at my club i hate them so much get them out right and yeah. we're still just at 20 players so of mm-hmm. umtiti griezmann Coutinho, brothwaite pianich ilas moriba ray Minaj, and neto you'd expect that five of them will probably still be registered with the first team and still be yeah. at the club in uh, three weeks or well, whenever it's up. Yeah. So uh, in a month's time. And so that's why you look at Lingley and UTT. I think Lingley is going to be at the club next, next year. I, I think I'd put it a 88% that Lingley is still going to be a first team member. Um, I think Griezmann, the reason why you're seeing the salary reduction rumors yeah. now is because I think that Atletico Madrid swap with Saul, when you look at how much Griezmann makes and the clubs that can afford him, I think that was the only lifeline unless something yeah. else comes from, from out of the blue or from the top rope, Griezmann. Well, like he doesn't want to go to PSG. I mean, PSG have had interest in him, but he himself, I think, doesn't want to go there. Right. He and... wants to stay at Barcelona, and if he's making that much, yeah. the club might, mm-hmm. you know, the club might say, "Hey, if you really want to be here, we need a salary reduction." And maybe he will do that because he makes so much that he does. But yeah, you're talking Lingle. I think Griezmann will still be around. Um, when even speaking about Aguero coming to the club, I can see with Ray Minaj getting sold maybe Brothwaite is still on the bench there. And then the same thing with Ilas Moriba. This is not done. I know they're going to negotiations, but it's not done yet. So I almost, until he's gone, I consider him a member of the first team because he will be with the first right. team if he stays. Uh, and so that even is only four players. So that means that one of Umtiti, Coutinho, Pjanic, uh, I think Ray Minaj will be sold. And then Neto, if there's a third goalkeeper and they can't move him, but if they don't move him, you're expected to have Iñaki Pena. So even with the four that I mentioned, we're at 24, right? So do you think Umtiti, Coutinho, Pjanic, or Neto, one of those four will even continue on at the club, thinking that Ray Minaj is out? I think so. And I mean, I think... Um, Brothway too, because I, I kind of forced that add-on just because Brothway got me to 24. And so did the Ismail. Uh, those two right. 24. Without them, we're at 22. No, I think Brothway, the, the, the so this is where it comes down to the, the situation of... I mean, I actually, not as a first-team Barcelona player, I feel like I don't want to open myself up to that. I kind of like Brothwaite as a player. You know what I mean? I feel like he just kind of, the 
being thrust onto the Barca team, sort of almost being like shoehorned in when he was brought in and everything, kind of invited a level of scrutiny that I think he sort of never asked for and kind of, you know, he doesn't deserve. I think he's like a perfectly fine player. And that's why I think he, the only reason I think he might, he's likely to be gone is I think that he can be had by, he's not the kind of guy that has to go to a Man United, Man City or PSG or, you know, there's a, there's a far larger range of clubs where he can go in and make a contribution and be probably, you know, possibly even be close to a sort of a mid table star rather than sort of a, a top of the table, you know, role player bench guy. And so I think, and the, the, the price that it would take to get him, I think is more palatable than it, like he would bring in something while at the same time, not being so pricey as to kind of price himself out of all but a handful of clubs. So that's why I think just he's, he's a saleable, like, and I hate to kind of use this term, but he's sort of, he's a saleable asset in that sense, you know, that yeah, because. We have to wonder what he's worth. Cause like, if I'm Mallorca who just came up, if I'm yeah. like, I'm taking my entire, my entire transfer budget, which is probably only like 3 million. And I'm just hoping that he agrees, but I don't even think that's a club that's going to afford him. I think he's probably worth a little bit more than that. But I don't yeah, know. I think so well, because I remember even when he, when he was with Leganes, he looked, you know, I mean, you know, watching watching like Leganes play other sort of, uh, think of like kind of the, the random La Liga teams that Leganes might play, sort of a, a Levante or a Hitafe type. And he looked head and shoulders above teammates. just about everyone else, every one of his teammates. Yeah. I mean, the runs that he would make and just kind of the, 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 the speed and kind of incisiveness that he would run with. I mean, he's he's not first team Barcelona good, but he's better than most clubs in the, in the top tier. Well, yes. Good, you know? Like um, Celta de Vigo, who should be <clears throat> thinking they're going to finish mid table. I'm yeah. praying that I can get some Iago Aspas insurance through Broadway. Right. Um, now that's the thing about Brothway. Maybe he's not going to stay in Spain because as we're talking about the numbers that he might be worth, I don't think any Spanish clubs, it's not just Barcelona dealing with transfer stuff. There's mm. no club in Spain that has any money to spend on transfer. Yeah, no one's really flush, no. <laughs> That's the problem all across Spain, and that is a conversation for a much, much uh, different time. For a different day, yeah. So if Brothwaite is gone, I can see how the Barcelona is probably calling all the Premier League clubs in the bottom or yeah. the projected bottom half of that table and saying, you know, hey, we have a guy that he's on the fringes of our team, so we'd prefer for him to be on the fringes or potentially starting for your team. So could you fork over 12 million euros or, or yeah. 14 million euros, right? Is, is that, is that. In, in my mind, he goes for about 15 million euros to a, to a club that kind of finishes say like 14th in the premier league. Like, you know, like that's just, that's like a, sort of the trajectory that I could see. <laughs> I mean, he did play for Millsboro. I mean, never mind her there. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So with Brathwaite, we're, I, yeah, it's hard to say that he's going to be or not be with Barcelona. He wants to stay. So I'm thinking there's yeah. other guys to go first. And that's why, again, I continue to put the X next to Brothwaite if he mm-hmm. really comes out and maybe Barcelona look to move him in January. But I think he will be registered in the fall uh, with Barcelona. I do. Um, but then that leaves, again, Umtiti, Coutinho, Pjanic. Do you think any of those three? I mean, again, to get us to 25, that's that was the goal was to get us to 25. And I could, it does, 25 is not set. It's not the Lulee. I think we I wind think up with... Yeah. Yeah. So I think there might. God, the Coutinho thing is tough. I mean, you know, I keep talking myself into because like he was no, fine no, no. to decent. No, no, no. Don't with... into the player. You, it's 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 done. It's dusted. His time at Barcelona has to be over. It has to be. But if they... oh no 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 oh I'm sorry no I was trying to say it as kind of like his time his decent moments at Bayern Munich weren't that long ago like right. we should be able to sell that to some other team right okay to be like look he's not completely I know he's not completely worried. washed I mean, you know <laughs> I thought you were trying to talk yourself into Coutinho I mean it's it's a dangerous place to be Emil no I've done I've done that in the past but no I've, I'm I'm off of that shit um, now. Coutinho, now, the thing is, um, I do think that, I think we wind up, I think there's a way that the the Pjanic thing works out, and they send him back to, they send him back to Italy, and I think that's, I think that is going to happen one way or another. I think, unfortunately, we wind up 
look, and if he's healthy, it wouldn't make me sad if MTT was around, but like, you can never be guaranteed of his health. And I think we're just going to, I think the thing is like, Barcelona are just going to, like, you're kind of stuck with MTT at this point, because I just think he makes so much money. And there's, I mean, unless Leon are willing to, you know, do something crazy, I don't think there's really a market for him. So I think you just kind of have to ride out his contract and, well, I also think last year with the amount of players that were healthy at times, he would yeah. be on the, just like Mateus Fernandez, he would be on the game day roster. He would actually be on the bench because Barca, yeah. I mean, there were times in the Champions League where Barca would carry all three goalkeepers and they would all be sitting, the, both of them, the Neto yeah. and Pena would be sitting on the bench. There was yeah. even, what was it, a Copa del Rey when it was all three of them. It was Neto, it was Pena, yeah. or Tanas, or Ter Stegen at the time, all sitting on, I mean, just, just absurd. So, yeah, that's why MTT would make the game day roster last year. But even with how the even with trying to pull teeth, get to twenty five, I think you're right that MTT is going to be if he's too hard to move. This will be the season where he's just going to be getting the Gareth Bale or whoever or the James Rodriguez, where yeah. teammates can just wave to him in the stands. Like why even why even get him a jersey size? Why even take his <laughs> measurements because he can just wear his. That, you know, he can just show off his designer clothing or whoever he has deals with outside of Barcelona. He can wear those things in the stands. Cause I think yeah, figure out how to make friends with them. Maybe I can just go hang out with them and watch the games with them. I mean, so, I mean, it, it's going to be no disrespect to the player. It's just going to be, if he is not, if, if basically the club is going to take the hard line that, Hey, you know, we gave you the option to leave and play. You didn't want yeah. to want to get paid here. So we're going to pay you to sit in the stands. And that's a bummer for the club, but Barcelona being a quote unquote super club, having paid what they did for him, having given him the raise that they did, he's just going to be in the stands. And this happened. Yeah. I think Barcelona actually fortunate to not be in this position in other times where there are more guys. Yeah. Right. Because their managers have been desperate, that being Kike Satin or even Valverde, they've been desperate to have to use everybody because I think those yeah. managers were going to be criticized if they did not try everything possible to get the results. Now, Kuma right. is in a position even after last year was just the Copa del Rey, I think with the squad they have and the understanding the fans finally have of their financial situation and the situation yeah. from TT, again, the abuse from TT is going to be rough. The Kool-Aid abuse from TT is going to be terrible because he's going to be sitting in the stands and they're just going to see a dollar sign. But this yeah. is what the clubs have to do. This is what Man United does. This is what Tottenham does. And this is not, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I, I'm saying it's a bad thing that, that, that this is what it's come to. It's a club's fault for paying him what they did. Yes, the knee injuries were unforeseen, but that was also three years ago that they couldn't negotiate, they couldn't work with him between now and three years ago to try to figure out some kind of solution for the player. Um, so yeah. I think you're right. I think with TT, we got there, Emil, 25. 25, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 25 is not a dead set number. It could be 23. It could be, and with you team players, it could be 24 with an extra third goalkeeper Neto if he doesn't leave. So it's not set in stone. But there you have it. There's the 25 players we think if Barca does go with 25 squad members, it gives 25 guys numbers. Those are the 25 we think that will get numbers. 